So I got my friend, Mr. Bones right here. Hey guys, Dr. Wong here at Next Level Physical Therapy. Today I'm gonna to teach you the best five exercises that you can do to decrease your knee pain. We all know how important staying active and mobile is for your overall health. Unfortunately, if your knees are stiff and achy, you might not be able to do that. So what I'm gonna teach you is the best five exercises that you can do to get rid of the knee stiffness and achiness so you can start moving again. Hey guys, Dr. Wong here with Next Level Physical Therapy. Today, I'm gonna to teach you the top five hip exercises that you can do to get rid of knee pain. So you might be wondering, what does my hip have to do with my knee? Well, let me explain. So your hip is right here, knee and ankle joint. Your knee is right smack between your ankle and your hips. So if you can tell right here, this is your femur or your thigh bone. So if your hip muscles and your hip joint is stiff or weak, guess what? Your knee joint has to take more pressure and work harder, which can increase pain. So when you loosen up the hip mobility and strengthen the hip muscles, there's less compensation in the knee and it will actually feel better. So before we get into the exercises, I wanna first describe what the knee joint is and what it does, okay? So I got my friend right here, Mr. Bones. So basically, you have a bone right here, which is a thigh bone called a femur. And the knee joint is basically the joint between the femur right here and your shin bone, which is your tibia, okay? So essentially, a knee joint has several motions. Primarily, it's straighten out the leg, which is what we call extension, bending the knee, which is basically called flexion, okay? There is some rotation component, but primarily, it's a kicking straight out, bending the leg, okay? Imagine your leg like four walls. You got the front wall, you got the inner wall, the outside wall right here, and then the muscles behind you, the back wall. Right? The front wall is your thigh muscles called quads. There's four muscles, and basically those muscles are to straighten and bend the knee. You have the back muscles right here. It's called hamstrings. You have the inner groin muscles called adductors, and then the muscles on the outside of the knee called abductors. And all these muscles work cohesively together to make sure you protect the knee joint. They do different things, obviously, but they have to work as a team to fortify the knee joint itself. The first exercise we're gonna do is line your stomach, digging your heels together to squeeze your butt cheek muscles. This is how you do it. You're gonna line your stomach. You bring your knees shoulder width apart. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend the legs put your heels together and from here push in the heels and squeeze your butt cheek you should feel the butt cheek muscles here activate hold that for 10 seconds and then relax squeeze hold for 10 seconds and relax if you feel low back that means you should probably drop your low back down and let your chest relax squeeze 10 second holds and then relax this is sidestepping with a band around your ankles. What you're gonna do is put a band around the ankles, keep your knees nice and stiff, pretend your legs are like chopsticks, so there's no bend in your knees, and then what you're gonna do is sidestep to the right for 10 steps, and then sidestep to the left for 10 steps. One round trip per day. What you should feel when you're doing this exercise is your hip muscles. Next exercise is a clamshell hold. Basically what you're gonna do is lie on your side, and stack both legs together, knees are bent, ankles are together, and what you're gonna do with this top knee right here is bring it to your ceiling high enough until you feel the side butt cheek muscle. You should not feel your thigh, your groin, you should not feel your hamstrings, you should not feel the outside of your knee. You should feel the muscles on the outside of the top hip. Once you do that, hold for 15 seconds for four rounds. If you're doing this properly, you should feel a burning sensation in that spot and nowhere else. Rinse and repeat this on both sides. A third exercise is called glute bridge. Basically what you're gonna do is line your back with both knees bent. This is also called a hook line position. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press your heel and the arch of your foot into the floor, bed or table, whatever surface you're on. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift the butt up toward the ceiling without arching your low back. So you can push down, Feel a slight stretch in the front of your hip. You should not feel anything above the belt line. So basically, you're pinching your butt cheeks together. At the top of the motion, hold for three seconds. One, two, three, and then come down slowly. Perform that for three sets of 10. Push off, squeeze the butt. One, two, three, come down slowly. 
The next exercise is what I call donkey kick. Basically what you're gonna do is activate glute muscles or your butt muscles without arching your low back. This is how you do it. You're gonna get on all fours. I'm gonna show you my right hip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna all fours, hands and knees are shoulder width apart. And essentially what you're gonna do with your right leg is you're gonna keep the knee bent and kick up towards ceiling. You should feel the right butt muscle. Hold for three seconds. Perform for 30 times per side. When you're doing this exercise, make sure you don't over kick up and arch the back. That's the wrong way to do it. So if you feel your low back, drop down a little bit where you feel only the butt and not the low back. Three second holds. And then relax. So first exercise for knee is to lubricate the knee joint and make it less stiff. Basically, all you gotta do is sit in a chair. So let's say my left knee is stiff and achy. What I'm gonna do with my two hands is hold my left knee up so it's relaxed and then I'm just gonna kick back and forth. You're gonna do this for 15 seconds. And what this is gonna do is get blood circulation to that left knee as well as increase synovial fluid which is gonna lubricate the joint. You wanna rinse and repeat this on the opposite knee for four rounds of 15 seconds. So for kneecap mode, what you're gonna do is create a grip like that. The middle finger goes on the bottom kneecap, the other finger goes around it. So you're holding the kneecap basically between the fingers. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull up towards the hip, just like that, okay? So what you're gonna do is as you strain out the leg, you're gonna pull that knee towards the hip in this direction, and then relax. The next exercise is sideline AD ductor lift. This is an exercise to strengthen the inner knee muscles. This is how you do it. You lie on your side. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cross one leg over. This is my right leg, so I'm working out my left leg. Basically what you're gonna do is keep that bottom leg straight, foot is relaxed, and you're going to bring that leg up towards the opposite leg. You're gonna feel your inner thigh, and then slowly relax. Bring it up and then relax. If you're doing this correctly, you should feel the muscles in the inner thigh and nothing else. Hold this for three seconds at the top and perform this for 12 times on both sides. After this exercise, you want to do a clamshell hold. This is an exercise to strengthen a muscle called glute medius, which is a super important muscle for hip stability, okay? Now, if you're wearing a pant leg with a line that runs down into the knee, this is the muscle that's right behind the line. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend both knees, and then what you're gonna do is keep the ankles together, and you're gonna slowly lift up the knee towards the ceiling. It's not about how high you bring up that leg. Once you open up that leg and you feel this kind of muscle between the back pocket and this line in the mid thigh area, that's the right spot. You should not feel the front of your legs, you should not feel your hamstrings in the back, and you definitely should not feel the groin area. Only this spot where my hand is rubbing. Hold that for 15 seconds for four rounds per side. Now the goal is, as you get stronger, you hold up to a minute straight. If you're doing this correctly, you should feel some burning sensation here and no other muscles working. Do this on both sides. The next exercise is what I call a hook line hamstring heel dig. What you're gonna do is lie on your back, both knees bent, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to lift up the ball of your foot so only your heel is touching the floor or the bed or table, whatever you're on. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press that heel down into the floor or table and you should feel the hamstring muscles or the muscles behind your thigh engage. Hold this for four rounds for 15 seconds. So I got a bonus for you. For those of you who feel ambitious, maintain the heel dig, engage in the hamstring muscles behind the thigh, and then from here, dig hard enough where you lift your butt up to our ceiling. Hold that for three seconds where you feel your butt muscles and the muscles behind your thigh. Then come down slowly. Do the heel dig glute bridge for three rounds of 10 seconds. The main thing for this one here is you're gonna feel a slight stretch here in the front of your thigh so you know you're at the top of the motion. You should not feel your low back at all, otherwise that means you're arching your low back and that's a bad compensation to have. Let's 
squeeze the butt cheeks as much as you can and hold for three. Come down slowly. With all these exercises, your knee pain should not increase. Now, if you can't do the recommended reps and sets, don't worry too much about it. Just start slow and build up to it. Decreasing knee pain takes time. If you think about it, most of you guys watching this video didn't have knee pain yesterday. It took some time to get some stiff and achy knees. So it's gonna take a little time to get out of it as well. As long as you stay consistent and trust the process, you will see results. Now that you know the top five exercises that you should be doing for knee pain, let me know which of these exercises work best for you. Also, if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our weekly videos. As always, move better, age stronger, and I'll see you next time.